Hello and welcome to the release video for version 15 of the Google Ads API. I'm Mattia Tomazone, a developer relations engineer on the Google Ads API, and I'll be walking you through the main updates in this release. There are several new features to discuss, so let's get to it. Let's start with the changes in the performance max space. First of all, asset group signals now support two different signal types, audiences and search themes. These asset group signals can be attached to an asset group for enhanced targeting. Asset group signals supported audiences prior to B15. However, the audience resource now supports two new fields, scope and asset group, which allow you to limit audience usage to a specific asset group. The asset group field must be set if and only if the scope has a value of asset group. A search theme is a keyword-like advertiser input that helps optimize targeting. This new criterion type can only be used in performance max campaigns to create an asset group signal by populating the asset group signal dot search theme with a search theme info criterion. Version 15 also introduces reporting enhancement for performance max campaigns that we know many users have been asking for. The asset group resource can now be queried with metric fields to evaluate performance max performance at the asset group level. In addition, the new asset group top combination view resource allows you to report on the top performing assets by asset group. There are also some changes about shopping campaigns, the first of which you may have seen coming. The sales country field in the shopping setting object has been removed and the existing values will now be exposed in the feed label field. This is the final step in the migration from sales country to feed label that we began in August 2022. We also removed the support for setting the shopping setting and the listing scope values in search campaigns. If you set one of these fields when creating or updating a search campaign, you will receive an operation not permitted for context error. For e-commerce advertisers, we also provide access to new sales and profit metrics such as the number of units sold, the average size of a shopping cart and the gross profit margin of each transaction. All these metrics are now exposed in several different reporting resources and are available to all advertisers who implement conversions with cart data. I'll leave you a link to the specific documentation for conversions with cart data in the video description below. Speaking of conversions, version 15 contains several improvements in diagnosing offline conversion imports. First of all, offline conversion upload client summary has been changed from a field in the customer resource to a top-level report. You can use it to obtain details about the conversion upload status such as the number of successful events, the success rate, and the error percentage. There are some changes in the account linking space as well. You can now use product link .merchant Center to link a Merchant Center account to a Google Ads account, instead of using the Merchant Center link service, which has been removed. We also added the product link invitation service to support updating a link invitation sent from other products, available for Hotel Center and Merchant Center accounts. There is a new criterion type, brand, that allows you to specifically target branded search queries in search campaigns, or to exclude them from your performance max campaign targeting. You can also use the newly introduced brand suggestion service to retrieve brand IDs from their names, or just their name prefixes. Version 15 adds a new feature in the recommendation space as well. There is a new service called Recommendation Subscription Service that allows you to subscribe to recommendation type to automatically apply any recommendations of that type. This means your users will be able to leverage the power of Google Ads recommendations without needing to manually check when a new recommendation is available. Finally, you can now create lookalike user lists using the Google Ads API. These are audiences based on a provided existing seed audience. Note that they can be used only in demand generation campaigns at the moment. As you can see, there are many updates, changes, improvements, and new ways to get exactly the information you need in version 15. The ones we just mentioned were just a few highlights, and we can't wait for you to try out all the new features in this version. For the complete list of changes that were included in version 15, check out our release notes. You can find that and other useful links in the video description below. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to the channel to always be up to date with the Google Ads API.